Hello, biology students. Today we're going to talk about the fungus among us. Ah, 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 ah. Yes, fungi. Let's learn about it. So what is kingdom fungi? And let's make sure we're not getting it confused with plants. Well, fungi are all eukaryotes, meaning they all have a nucleus. It also means that pretty much they are all multicellular. Additionally, they have a cell wall, which I know also sounds a lot like a plant, but this cell wall is actually going to have a different material. We're going to learn about the material that makes up the plant cell wall in a future set of notes. This one's called chitin. I call it chitin, but chitin is a carbohydrate, meaning a sugar-like molecule, and it is also found in the exoskeleton of insects. Weird. So it's kind of very firm, and it gives the fungus a lot of structure. They're all heterotrophs, all right? Specifically, the way they consume other things is through decomposition, decomposers. They break down things. And for a number of cells, the majority of them are multicellular, like mushrooms and molds, but there are some unicellular or single-celled fungi like yeast. And we've used yeast in class, so don't forget yeast are a fungus. Um, we'll talk about other examples throughout this set of notes. Let's learn more about the structures and how they work. So we're going to mostly focus on multicellular fungi because they're the majority. Um, and so uh, when we think about multicellular fungi, how do they work? Well, multicellular fungi have lots of thin strands, which kind of look like roots, but they're not roots. They, they work differently, and they are called hyphae which is a really weird word, hyphae. So these root-like strands or filaments are called hyphae. And a mushroom, the main body of it, or the main body of a fungus in general, is usually made up of a lot of these strands all tangled in like a big ball of yarn-like structure or a thick ball or mass called mycelium. So if we were to look at the top of a mushroom cap, that reproductive structure that will give off spores is really the same structure as the root stuff, but like a tangled mess of it. But the basic kind of structure is still this hyphae, these strands of fungus. It's just that in the top of the mushroom, they're tangled. Okay. Fungus also do reproduction in interesting ways. Um, so one major way that we think about the most is that they give off spores, right? That stuff that sometimes people are, have allergies to, um, and that's the way they sexually reproduce because spores are actually gametes, meaning they're kind of like sperm cells in the way, right? And they're released from the gills. So if we're picturing a mushroom underneath, there's like that weird stuff that's, uh, gills, and out will come spores. There are also ways that if accidentally some types of fungus get their structure at the bottom cut off, the hyphae, they can make clones of themselves. Things that are identical genetically are clones, that's asexual reproduction. So fungi do have the ability to do both types of reproduction, sexual and asexual. We do know from our other notes in the past that sexual reproduction does have the benefit of allowing for better survival if the environment changes. All right, now let's talk about the fact that fungi are heterotrophs. Heterotrophs, remember, means they eat other things, but the eat in this case is actually decomposition. And they're not really eating with mouths, right? Fungi don't have mouths. So how do they really get the energy from these resources that they're eating? Well, decomposers, remember, um, they are digesting and recycling. Specifically, fungi will digest their food outside of their body. So those root-like structures called hyphae, they will send out a, um, enzymes that will break down dead things like plants and animals and through that structure that seems like roots they'll absorb the nutrients so again it's a structure of roots which we call the hyphae and they will send out chemicals that break down dead things and then it sucks it up like they're straws weird okay so those hyphae which are kind of like roots they are really in charge of absorbing, 
all right? But this word absorption or absorb is frequently used to talk about fungi. Fungi are useful. We use them for a lot of things. We use them to produce antibiotics like penicillin. Remember that antibiotics has the word bio in it, so it only kills living things, not viruses. Um, we also use fungi to make cheeses, mostly things that are blue cheeses. I don't like blue cheeses, but lots of people do. Gross. Um, and they also um, are useful because, for instance, yeast, remember, was our example of a type of fungus that's only one cell and we use yeast to make lots of things that are food bread wine beer and so um don't forget that back in the day at the beginning of the year we learned about alcoholic fermentation anaerobic respiration of yeast and how they give off both some alcohol and some co2 through respiration yeah that was alcoholic fermentation without oxygen and we use that to make bread, wine, and beer. Very good, good reminder. Don't forget, maybe you should review that if that makes no sense to you. One of the last couple of things we do need to talk about is these fungi can be also useful just in general in the ecosystem because they have this frequent mutualistic relationship with something called a lichen. A lichen is um, a relationship between um, a fungus in a photosynthetic organism. It usually looks like the crusty stuff on rocks or trees. That's really what it looks like, crusty stuff. It's usually grayish, greenish, bluish. All right, and so remember symbiosis means two things are living together. Mutual, mutualism means they both are benefiting. And so in this case, we have a fungus, right, and something that's photosynthetic. So the photosynthetic thing can be algae, or a bacteria, but together they are working really hard and they are pioneer organisms. Remember that word pioneer, meaning they like to be the first thing that arrives during the process of succession. So on rocks they can survive, on dead things they can survive, they don't need a lot of nutrients, which is super cool. All right team, we made it through fungi. Make sure you review how these things are different than animals and plants. Good job.